Hey, welcome back everyone. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to drag and drop items within your prototypes. And by that, I mean how your users would actually use it to drag and drop their items. In this specific scenario, I have a couple of different cards right now defined in Axure. As you can see, it's all mocked up within Axure. And it's quite easy just to imagine that, let's say, the users would take this card or something and they would just drag it into this container and then just leave it there for whatever reason, you know, fictitious scenario, as usual, just practice. There are some complications here, because as you can see, we have three items at the moment, and presumably you would have, you know, multitude of different items which could be affected by this dragon and, and you know, dragging out and, and whatnot. So, what we want to achieve in this video, which is probably gonna have follow-up videos, is we're gonna allow the users to, let's say, select one of the cards like this one, drag it in, in this box and fixate that within that box. So we're gonna switch the state of the box, maybe add the background to it. We're also gonna take this card and you know, just kind of like click it in this segment. And maybe we can act actually take these cards, you know, which are the other ones and just push them up a little bit. Now, I have these cards, so I'm gonna go ahead and just create dynamic panels out of all of them. Else, I'm gonna give it a name. So let's say C1 is gonna be our primary, C2 is the second one, and C3 is the third one. Simple as that. All of them at the moment are interactive, they don't have to be, but for whatever reason, if you feel like it, make it interactive, you know. And next, what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna also make a dynamic panel out of this one. So this is an active state and we can call it like basket, let's say. That's where our cards are gonna end up. And inside, I'm gonna create two states. One is gonna be default, which is inactive. Another one is gonna be active, let's say. And in the active one, we can maybe add a slight tin, so a fill of sorts. And maybe some type of transparency, so it's just slightly different like so. I think we could also change this and add another state to it. So something like, let's say this is a default. And it's a mouse over one. And in a mouse over, I'm just gonna add it, add it like an outline. I'm gonna use, let's say purple before or something like that. Again, you can play with a color if you wish. I just want to keep it quiet, simple, maybe light purple so it stands out from a background a little bit more, but simple as that. Uh, to finish off, I'm going to add interaction saying on mouse enter, set panel state, SC1, and then mouse over. And just copy that statement for a new interaction, which is mouse out, paste it in, and just say default. Now we're going to see what happens what when we go back as you can see our object gets that outline maybe we just need to tweak the color here to a little bit more prominent and then we're just gonna take it and drag it in simple as that so i'm gonna go ahead fix that and now the best bit basically what we want to do really is we're gonna tell it that whenever we, we move this object or whenever the drag starts we're gonna move this and if this card is above this thing we're just gonna move the card inside and it potentially is gonna click there are a couple of components here what we need to definitely define so first and foremost i'm gonna allow it to be draggable and that's easy so i'm gonna select new interaction and you're gonna find something on drag you could also use on drag start, on drag drop. We used it in multiple videos before, so it's up to you to discover, experiment with it. But I would recommend to just go ahead and use on drag, meaning whenever you initiate drag, what happens, or whenever you're dragging, so it's gonna be continuously updated instead of just one off event like on drag start or on drag stop, right? So on drag, and I'm gonna say move C1 with drag in both all directions and no need to animate straight trajectory simple as that so now it's gonna allow us to move it around let me show you how it's done boom as you can see now I can basically drag this card around my canvas 
and just leave it whatever I want, like so. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah? So next, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna, whenever I reach this point, and let's say touch it, or I'm over it, I'm gonna change the background of the thing right here, and then I'm gonna just position it and clip it in. For that, I'll definitely need to know down our coordinates. So let's see, this is the end position of it. And as you can see, it's 426. Oh, pen and paper. Always good friends, as in other videos mentioned, you need it. So we have pen and paper ready, especially in complex prototypes or something which needs coordinate uh, approach uh, of prototyping. We are gonna go ahead, we can add a case basically. And in the case, let's say this is a typical case. And we can add a logic and say something like, if area of widget, this, the one we're dragging is over area of widget, we're gonna select our background, which I think it was basket. We're gonna allow it to drag, but we're also gonna do several cases for that immediately and I'm just gonna switch it to toggle it to if. So one is gonna be a simple dragging, which is our default. The second one is gonna be what happens if you reach the thing. Two, because sometimes actually gets confused if you have two cases of the same thing. But as you can see, we have two cases, a like carbon copies of it. The only thing what we don't need after we create a carbon copy is the if here. You can just delete it like so, if true. That's fine, the other one, if it's over that area, then do something. And here, we're saying if it's over this area, we need to do something. Sh set the panel state and invert this, so that we can highlight exactly that it's over it, so like this. As you remember, we created an active state before. And then we also can move it and just click it in as a result. So I'm gonna select that C1 and we're gonna move it to, and we have our coordinates outlined 426 by 127. 127, like so. And we can also animate if you wish. Um, we could, could bounce it, maybe in like 400 ms or so, like so. And that should do the trick. Let's test it out. As you can see, we drag it, boom, immediate clipped it in. But now it's going back. It doesn't really want to. You can see it got confused. Let's see again. Boom. See, it sort of works, but it has a life of its own. Now it starts to misbehave a little bit. And I know why. That's because we overreached a little bit. This is all good, except for the move bit. We don't really need that move bit. We can delete it here. And I'm gonna show you exactly why. So at the moment, let's say if I preview without a move bit, you're gonna see that everything works pretty well. We're just gonna say it, that once we release it on a drag end, that's when we're gonna move it. Because otherwise the actor is just gonna get confused. I think I'm just gonna make another case. And that's gonna be case three before we move on, just saying that if it's not over the area, of a widget, we're just gonna tell it to go to default, like so, and then add a new interaction, basically saying on drag and on drag drop move our card C1 to and our coordinates, which was 426, 127, 127, like so. With a condition, of course, add a condition that it's over it. Because if we drop it and it's not over it, we probably need to move it back in the list where it was before, right? That's probably the most logical bit. But I'm gonna say area of a widget, this is over area of a widget, and select our basket. Simple as that. We're gonna move it to there. If it's not there, we are not gonna allow it to, let's say, move there. For now, let's just see exactly what happens. If we follow the step right, as you can see, it, we do this, it highlights or not, and then we can drop it in. Boom! 
it works. If we don't want it, we can drop it somewhere else. But if we want it, it boom, it clicks in. Boom, it clicks in. It, as you can see, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? So if I just enter it a little bit, it clicks in. Pretty good. The only thing what's missing for now for this demo, for this basic introduction to drag and drop, I think just realignment of these bits. And it's just because, you know, once we bounce it in, I would want to reposition these cards up, especially knowing that it's a limited prototype of a specific just one card being moved at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and just edit one of the drag drop bits. I'm gonna log the position of the card right there, the, the default one. So this is gonna be 70 by 106, and the second one is 7207. Quite simple. So I'm going to tell it to on drag drop, just move the other bits up a little bit. Move C2 and C3. So C2 to just one card up where the first card was before. 106. And also move the third card to where the second card was before, which is 70 by 207 just like so and let's preview it let's see if that actually does the trick as you can see i could move it here but if i move it just over it and release boom and it reshuffles the other cards we could even add animations to it uh, some effects if you wish i think you know it would look even better like let's say a waiting of sorts maybe wait i don't know like for half a second before reshuffling it so it's a bit more natural um, maybe animating it in so let's say easing in 400 and then easing in as well on the last one as well as maybe as 400 so it's gonna be a bit more smoother but again it's all cosmetical changes at this point if i release it boom it updates those things if i go back nothing is gonna happen but this is something we maybe can cover in the different video or the next iteration of a drag and drop. If you found this useful and you want to find out more about drag and drop and how to make it intuitive type of grids of items and, you know, for me to explore deeper, leave a comment down below. As always, give a like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, tell a friend and I'll see you next time.